Hello everyone, thanks for joining. Hope you are well. I'm Arno and I'm a software engineer at AppSchool. With a bunch of other developers, currently I'm uh, working on the QBDB project. Today I'm going to give you an overall update from the uh, MongoDB side of our QBDB project. What new features we aim at and what we have done so far. I'm also expecting suggestions and feedback from you for the betterment of our project. So let's start. These are the contents of today's webinar. I will uh, firstly introduce you to MongoDB hidden node for replica set and sharded cluster. Then uh, I will uh, give some uh, manual failover test cases with uh, to test the high availability of the MongoDB replica set and sharded cluster. Then I will show you uh, vertical scaling and horizontal scaling of request, and then reconfigure and volume extension of request to uh, work with MongoDB hidden node. Uh, to uh, yeah, to be familiar uh, with the replica set concept is uh, must before uh, we introduce to MongoDB hidden node. Uh, MongoDB uh, replica set is uh, actually a group of Mongo process that maintains the same data set. The primary goal of uh, MongoDB replica set is uh, redundancy and high availability. And uh, this is uh, the you know, basis of the all productions. Here in the left hand side, you can see that uh, it is a very basic structure of a MongoDB replica set where one primary and two secondary takes place. And the secondary nodes actually replicating the upload from the primary node. If one client uh, wants to communicate with this replica set, it will uh, write, read or write on the primary node and uh, read from the secondary nodes as well. And uh, the uplogs is actually a special kind of uh, capped collection which is a fixed size collection that overrides the oldest entries when it uh, recurs with the maximum size. Upload keeps uh, all the record from the current operation and modify the stored data in your database. And on the right hand side, you can see that this is a more complex structure of MongoDB replica set where hidden nodes, uh, secondary nodes, arbitrary nodes, uh, all of them are added. A hidden node in, uh, is a replica set member which is uh, can maintain a copy of primary data set, but it, it, it will be remain invisible from the client applications. So uh, it is very good for the workloads with different structures. Suppose uh, you want to uh, cover up a replica set with uh, in-memory databases, but uh, you also want to uh, rolling update, uh, rolling backup of the whole cluster. So in that case, you can uh, use a hidden node with uh, the, that in-memory database. So you can do that. And uh, the hidden nodes must always be priority to members, so they can't be primary. So uh, if uh, primary goes down, uh, another secondary, another uh, general secondary will be become the primary, but the hidden will not. And uh, the db.hello command uh, method will and doesn't display these hidden nodes. However, uh, they can vote in the elections. So uh, let's start the demo part. Uh, for the demonstration purpose, I have already installed QPB on my uh, cluster of uh, 2022 uh, August 8 version. You can uh, go to this site or QPB.com site to uh, actually get the license and uh, install the QPB on your cluster. Here uh, you can see that a, a replica set YML here. The kind is MongoDB and API version is kubedb.com v1 alpha 2. I'm going to uh, deploy this in a cluster. The MongoDB name is RS, which is in demo name space. The version I'm using is Parkuna 4.4.10, and the replica set name is simply replica set. This is uh, the port template you can see, where I have set the CPU to 400 millicore and memory to 400 megabit. And the replica count is three, so uh, there will be one primary and uh, to secondary number in this replica set. Here you can see that uh, the storage engine is set to in memory. And I have also enabled the required SSL mode. So I need to actually uh, refer the issuer here, where I have used the search manager issuer named MongoCA issuer. And uh, this is the arbiter spec, which is uh, kind of similar like this uh, primary and secondary replica set port template. And this is the hidden template where I've also used a CPU of 300 millicore and memory of 300 megabyte. And uh, the storage class name is set standard, which is the default storage class of a uh, kind cluster. And the termination policy is set to go. So uh, let's uh, deploy this replica set. Before uh, deploy this replica set, we need to create the namespace first. 
the dictionary demo. Now, uh, as uh, you can see that we have developed this issuer here. So we need to actually create the PLS secret and issuer first before deploying. This is the secret and this is the issuer. So the secret and issuer has been created. I can uh, show you the secret. The name of secret is Mongo CA. So this is the secret. And here uh, you need to give two fields TLC or TLC standard or TLC secret. Now I can deploy the TLC. Okay. The RS uh, replica set has been created. So in the right hand side, you can see that uh, these are the resources is being creating. The version is Parpana 4.4.10, and which is in provisional state. The ports are actually uh, initializing. So let's wait for some time. I can show you the state full set in the demo space. Here you can see that uh, the same named of uh, MongoDB, uh, state full set has been created. And it is uh, bringing up those three ports. The first port is in running, so let's exit into it. Okay, we're inside the uh, Mongo RS0 port. Uh, as the TLS is enabled, let's go and uh, copy the command. In this command, uh, we are just uh, this is the authenticating command of MongoDB, where I have uh, set the TLS to be enabled and TLS CF file is this, TLS certificate key file is this one, this is the username and this is the password. So, pretty standard uh, command for authenticating. Okay, we're inside the primary database. In the meantime, I can show you the state book setting. Here you can see that uh, the, this is uh, the replica set which we have uh, defined here. There are three replicas, and for arbiter, there is one state book set, and for DDN, there is another. So, here for arbiter, there is one port, and hidden, there is another state book set which has two ports. So, all of them is uh, initializing. After it being uh, ready, we we can run the RS status command. And now, there you can see that RS zero is primary, RS one, RS two, those two are secondary. RS uh, arbiter zero is arbiter now, so that one arbiter port, and uh, these are saying that they are secondary. So, if they are uh, hidden or not, we need to uh, run the RS config command to show that if this is a hidden node or not. Here you can see that RS hidden zero, this is uh, set to hidden true, and there is one boot and priority zero. So it can't become the primary, it is one boot, and this has been set to hidden true. So this two is hidden node, and you can see that arbiter only two, this one arbiter code. So everything is okay. Now we'll uh, show you the automatic failover and uh, high availability of the MongoDB replica set. On the left hand side, you can see that uh, it is uh, a replica set shown here, where one primary, one secondary, one hidden, and one arbiter take place. They're replicating uh, data from the primary. So suppose uh, if a primary goes down, this goes down. In that case, uh, our hidden node and arbiter node both have priority zero, so they can't become primary, but they can boot on the election. So if there are separate, uh, several secondary nodes here, from that those secondary, there will be uh, after the election there will be one primary selected, and this is one that, and uh, this primary as uh, this is now unreachable. This, this is that. So after the election, one uh, new secondary should be a new primary. So. If we now uh, to test this, I can uh, delete one of the ports. Let's see, we are deleting the primary port forcefully. The primary port has been deleted. And uh, now uh, another uh, 
one of the port, uh, secondary port should be become primary. Let's click one on build. Let's see, we're going to RS1. Okay. And run the TLS command again. Here. You can now see that RS1, we are inside the RS1, and this has become the primary. So if I now the RS TLS command again, and here you can see that RS0 has become the secondary and RS1 has become the primary, and everything is okay for uh, as of previous. Now uh, let's uh, show the database here. If we use something like MyDB just for uh, demonstration purpose, and if we now insert into the collections, let's see where inserting some random data. Random data, let's say. Okay. We have inserted uh, into the MyDB uh, of false collection. So if we now exit into the hidden node, we should see those data also. We are inside the hidden node. Let's uh, copy the move command, TLS command again. Okay. If I now show the DBs, uh, yeah, we need to slave over here. Okay. Yes, this is uh, not primary, so Mongo is actually not giving that to show. Okay, we can now show. Here you can see that MyDB is also have been replicated, and if we use the MyDB database to show the collections, so db dot calls dot find, and here you can see the random data has been correctly replicated. Now uh, I want to uh, show you. The uh, how to uh, particle scale the hidden nodes. Here you can see that uh, I'm going to apply a MongoDB ops request here in the demo space which with names particle, and uh, it is of AP version ops dot slash v one alpha one. The type is has been set to more uh, particle scaling, and uh, this has been the database step which we have uh, already deployed here with this one. And uh, this is the arbitrary spec, and this is the hidden spec. So we are uh, setting the hidden uh, ports CPU to 600 millicore and hidden ports memory to be a uh, 600 megabit. Let's uh, apply that. There you can see that uh, the MongoDB request with name particle has been applied, and it is in progressing state. So as of now, we uh, we have uh, particularly scaled the arbiter and hidden. So this will first uh, register the arbiter ports and then the hidden ports. Let's wait for some time to uh, make to get successful. It is a, it is restarting the arbiter zero port. Okay, this running. Now it will uh, restart the RS hidden zero port. Okay. So this report will uh, be restarted one by one. Let's wait for some time. It is running, so I can get the Y1 now. Okay. This is the YML. And if I go to the resource section here, you can see that the uh, CPU and memory resources request has been set correctly. And uh, all of the uh, ports that we needed has been restarted. So it should be uh, successful in a second. Okay, now it's successful. Now I will uh, I will uh, going to show you the how to reconfigure the hidden nodes on in a MongoDB replica set. So uh, the API version kind these are same as previous. I will uh, apply the reconfigure of request in demo space also, and this is of type reconfigure. The database is same, 
and uh, this is the configuration I want to apply in the uh, hidden nodes and the replica cell members. So uh, before applying, I need uh, this two secret to be created in our cluster. Uh, the one is connection conf and one is uh, lock conf. So let's create first them. The connection conf actually uh, have the configuration of max incoming connection to uh, 27,000 and the lock conf actually uh, holds the configuration of the uh, system log path. So we are going to apply uh, this secret first and then I will apply the reconfigure option. Let's apply the secret. Okay. Name is connection conf. Here it should be connection conf. Okay. The connection conf secret has been created, and now this should be the lock conf. Okay. Those two secret has been created. We can uh, verify that by give secret from a lock conf. Let's see log conf. There it is. Okay, now I'm going to I apply the auxiliary list. That is reconfigured. Here you can see that uh, the reconfigure auxiliary list has been created and which is in progressing state. So it will, uh, as, as now we have, we are configuring the replica set members and hidden members. So it will first uh, restart the replica set members one by one and then the hidden members to get the updated configuration on uh, inside the port. Uh, here you can see the RSG report already has been uh, restarted. Okay, let's wait for some time to be uh, in the running state. Okay. It is in running state. In the meantime, I want to exit into that port to show what happened actually. If I uh, now get the config TV, this is the configuration where uh, this secret has been mounted. Uh, the connection config actually, connection configuration secret will be mounted here. And uh, this is uh, the configuration. If I now run again the TLS command, We are inside replica set primary, and if I run the uh, admin command here, we get same line nodes. Okay. Here you can see that uh, this is the actually all the arguments here we are using. So in uh, the net, here it is the max incoming connection has been set to. 2,727,000. So we are actually getting the updated configuration. And in the meantime, RS0, RS1, RS2, all of them have been restarted. The hidden G report also been restarted. Now it's time for the hidden one. We can also execute to the hidden G root and show you, just let me copy the Mongo command again. Okay. And TV dot, we're uh, running the same command. We have seen the numbers. Okay. Here you can see that system log has been uh, correctly enabled. And if I now get the path, which is data slash config uh, slash log dot txt. If I now go to this path, we should see the log here of the hidden node. And here it is. So, so far so good. And uh, the reconfigure uh, obstacle also has been successful. Let's uh, going back to the time uh, slide again. We have applied this and the reconfiguration has been successful. Now I'm going to uh, talk about the MongoDB sharding cluster. Sharding is a method for uh, distributing the data across multiple machines. MongoDB uses sharding to uh, support 
the deployments with very large data set and high throughput operation. Here uh, we can you can see that there are three members, with one is shard, one is mongoose, and one is config server. Shard is actually the data bearing nodes, and it contains the subset of the sharded data. Each shard is uh, deployed as replica set, so uh, the, each of the shard is actually have having primary, secondary, arbiter, and hidden node, blah blah, all those things. And uh, together, the clusters shards holds the entire data for the cluster. And performing queries on a single shard, if you uh, if you want to uh, just apply in this uh, shard, so you will get the subset of data, not the whole cluster data, obviously. And we have to uh, connect to Mongoose to perform the cluster level data. So this is the use case of Mongo, which is uh, queried out. And uh, a client will connect to the Mongoose and Mongoose will call the config server because it doesn't know the which shard holds which chunks of data. So it will go to config server and ask the config server actually to know which shard actually holds the uh, which chunk of data. And config server holds this metadata, includes the list of chunks on every shard, and it ranges the defined of chunks. So the client actually calls the Mongoose. Mongoose goes to config server. It knows everything and and then the correctly shared will be called. Here you can see that uh, the hidden node uh, YML, uh, replicated YML with hidden node. Sure. And uh, this is of same uh, API version, kind, same. And this is the name is uh, SH of M name space. This is uh, the config server uh, spec where I have uh, specified three replicas of config server, and this is the storage spec and uh, memory and CPU spec. Same for uh, Mongoose and Sharp. These are similar. We are using the version 4.4.6. This is the arbiter spec, and uh, this is uh, the hidden spec, where uh, we have specified the CPU and memory to be 500 millicore and 500 uh, megabyte, respectively. And there will be two replicas of hidden. And we have set the storage class name to Linode block storage, which is the uh, default storage class of Linode. So we are going to uh, deploy this shard cluster to Linode. And um, the storage is set to 10 GB. Okay. So to connect with our Linode, we have uh, sourced this Linode file. I can show you there. We're just uh, uh, using the Linode config file. Which is set been set has been to cube config. So we are connectedly we are currently connected to the Linux cluster. I can show you the main space now. Okay. For simply the for uh, to for time purpose, I have already uh, applied the sharded cluster here. I can just show you that. I need to first source the payload config. Okay. There it is. I've already deployed the sharded cluster as uh, it will take time to uh, get it ready. So, as uh, we can count the ports here, here you can see that uh, the config server has three ports, Mongoose has two, uh, shard has two plus one, three plus two, five. So, each of the shard will be have five ports. And here you can see that this is the config server, who is Mongoose, and this is the shard zero, and this is the shard one. So everything has been deployed correctly. Now I'm, I'm going to show you how to expand uh, volumes of fish in a sharded cluster of MongoDB uh, using hidden nodes. And you can see that uh, the kind is MongoDB ops request, which is of ops.qdb.com beyond alpha, which is same as previous. And the type has been set to volume extension. We are uh, going to expand the volume in uh, online method. So the database will be uh, accessible from the client applications uh, throughout this uh, uh, this expansion. And we are using the shared ports to uh, hold 12 GB of data and uh, 12 GB storage and hidden nodes to 13 GB. Let's uh, apply this in the Linux cluster. Okay, we're going to apply the expansion. Here you can see the MongoDB of 
just watch the PVC now to show what is happening. On the left hand side, you can see that the shard 0 and shard 1 port have got 12 GB of storage. And these two shard also 12 GB of storage has been got. And this hidden node should get 13 GB uh, after it gets successful. Let's wait for some time. We can see the updates here. Here, uh, the hidden GB is now 13 GB, and all of them got 13 GB. So, the uh, obstacle should be successful in any Okay, now it's successful. So, the volume has been, uh, has been expanded correctly. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to uh, horizontally scale the MongoDB uh, hidden nodes. Let's first apply that and then we can talk about that because it will take some time. Okay, now it's progressing. Let's see what we have been applied now. We have, we have, we have been applied this way now. Uh, the type is horizontal scaling, which is a view, uh, AP version and kind is same as previous. The name is horizontal in the space. This is the reference of the database, and we are uh, we have set the shard count to be three, and each of the shard should have two replicas, one primary and one a secondary node, and the hidden nodes uh, there should be one uh, replica of hidden node on each shard, and uh, there will be two replicas of git config server port and three replicas of mongoose port. So we have uh, applied this spec. Let's see what is happening in the Leno cluster. It is in progressing state. Already you can see that there was uh, two hidden port. Now it has been one. So after uh, specifying uh, this to one, it has been removed the extra hidden port. Okay. This has been initializing because we have set the a shard count to three. Previously, it was uh, it was two, right? It was a shard count two. So there will be one extra shard, and for that shard, we should uh, the hidden and arbitrary puts as well. So the new shard is being creating. It will uh, take some time, and that's why I have applied before actually tested that. Each of the shard is uh, going to have this four port. So shard two is going to uh, have this four port. We can uh, show the YML now. Okay. After uh, after the shard two port is running, it should create the shard two arbiter and shard two hidden state two sets as well. It is in initializing. Okay, now we should see uh, the shard two arbiter. Here it is, and there should be uh, one another state two set which is. Uh, shard two hidden. This is in running. Now the hidden can be created. Here it is. So uh, here, uh, firstly, uh, the replica count has been decreased as the hidden is set to one, and previously it was uh, two. Previously it was two. So Firstly, it has uh, deleted the extra hidden port. Then the replica count and shard has been enabled. So there, there is there is having three shards, and uh, the arbiter and hidden state two set has been also created. Now uh, the config server uh, should be uh, config server port should be removed because we are uh, specifying it to two, and it was previously three which is, uh, we have specified here. 
Let's see what is happening. Okay. Here, the config server should be removed by now if after restarting the mongoose. Because uh, mongoose, after restarting the mongoose, will uh, take up the latest configuration of shards. Okay, mongoose 0 is running, mongoose 1 is also running. Okay, this is running state. Let's wait for some time. And you can see that the config server has been removed. There was uh, two config server port, and now it is one. And the mongoose 2 has been created, which we have specified here because we are. Uh, Expecting three replicas of one for, and it is successful. So everything uh, has been worked correctly. The PVC has been expanded by volume expansion. Uh, the shard has been uh, shard and hidden ports has been uh, scaled by horizontal scaling. So so far so good. Uh, for uh, the future work purpose. We are uh, going to add the elite node support for MongoDB, and we also uh, going to support MongoDB version 6.0, which has been released recently. And we are going to add the horizontal scaling with using Kubernetes global scaler. So these are the work we are going to focus on in future. Uh, this is uh, this is all that I have one I have wanted to show you. So if you have any question, you just please go on. Hello. Uh, oh no, it seems there have no question yet in our chat box. So with this, we are concluding the webinar. Thank you all for your lively participation. We hope to see you again next time. Our upcoming webinar are already scheduled in our website, visit slash webinar to register. Have a nice day.